Your reporting says this uh, might be wrapped up maybe sooner rather than later. Well, we'll see. I think, you know, it still hasn't been voted on, and there could be changes at any time. And, you know, as you know, this has gone through a lot of different iterations. Meg Whitman was very interested and then was not. Um, there's been a lot of people they've talked to. There's still other candidates in the mix. So, I, you know, I don't expect it for a couple of weeks, but it's sooner than later, which is a good thing for Uber, I think. How would you characterize uh, the overlap between what Uber would require of ML and what he's already done in his career at GE? Well, they require an experienced executive. They require someone who's unflappable, I think, who isn't going to um, have a problem with a board that's highly dysfunctional and not getting along. They're going to have a, someone who's going to have to know how to recruit people. They're going to have to have someone who knows a little bit about tech and how to manage tech. Um, and they've got to have someone that Wall Street investors are going to like. And he certainly fits the bill. And I don't know who the other two executives are. They're both men. I've been trying to find out. I've called every CEO I know, and that's a lot of them. Um, but, uh, you know, that could change. Again, it could change at any time. But I think one of the things that, I, that some of the people on the board like about him is he's quite unflappable about a lot of these issues and isn't bothered uh, by the drama and probably could handle uh, the former CEO, Travis Kalanick. One of those points you mentioned, Kara, is someone that Wall Street investors could like. Interesting timing for Uber as mm -hmm. we anticipate whether they're going to go public and what's happened to the valuation right. as a result of all of this mess. I just wonder if that opens Imelt up to some criticism. When he took over GE, stock was over 40. It's now below 25. Yes, the company's paid dividends, and he has a great reputation as a manager. Right. But I wonder on that specific Wall Street point, given what's ahead of Uber. Well, Uber's kind of, they've already done that already. The, the, the value of Uber has declined among investors. That's been widely reported. So it's not as if he's coming into a great situation. Um, I think the issue is can it go public or will it sell or something else? I'm just, they just need an executive capable of managing uncertainty pretty easily. I think getting to how much it's worth and how rich everybody's going to get is probably the secondary question at this point. It's getting it stable stabilize getting the executive uh, group in there and, and bringing it to become the kind of company it's fully capable of being given how great the product is and, and getting it into a financially healthy uh, situation at the same time. Right. Does, does the, would the choice of ML suggest that they are more interested in eventually having an IPO than not? No, I don't think so. I think he could do anything. He's certainly an experienced executive. Now, again, there are, other, there are two other candidates, and that could certainly change. What they've got to do, the critical thing, is they've got to land someone, one of these people, so they can get forward and stop, you know, doing this. You know, the board is still fighting over everything. I, I, I literally spent yesterday checking out three more rumors that were untrue uh, with board members disagreeing on certain things. And so... You know, they really have to move on and actually do the business of Uber rather than, than these machinations that go on among and between uh, all the people on the board. It's, it's not good I, for employees. As far as the, who the other candidates are, I cited your piece earlier in that Imelt is not a woman, as some inside Uber wanted, yeah. but also not a tech bro, which could be helpful. Do the other yeah. candidates, as far as you know, sort of fit that profile as well? I think they're, they're, C, they're apparently CEO people. They have tech backgrounds. Uh, they're well known, I understand. Although I literally, I've called, I literally call people at home. I'm like, hmm. are you the CEO? And it's, I feel like it's Cinderella <laughs> at this point. I'm like trying shoes on everybody, but <laughs> you know, and I know again, and so are other reporters. So it's really, I tried a bunch of people. There was a rumor that Meg Whitman was back uh, this weekend. Not so, um, you know, I just, you just have to spend a lot of time. It's like whack-a-mole at this point. But from what I understand, Benchmark is getting used to the idea. Um, you know, there's some holdouts about, around Imult, and not everybody is decided by any means on the board, but they've got to coalesce around one of these three candidates, and, and it seems as if he has uh, the most support among everybody. It's not, it may not be an unanimous, a unanimous uh, decision at the same time, which I don't think right. he cares about either. That's another issue. So, so and, then, and then finally, uh, does it, the future for Travis and his involvement, how serious does it get? Uh, I don't know. It's a good question. I think, you know, someone like Immelt is probably willing to have him around. It's not, he, he certainly is experienced. And look, no matter what you think about Travis Kalanick, he's a brilliant uh, guy. And he certainly has, and, and the things he's done, he has not managed this company very well, obviously, on lots of levels, not just culture levels, but all these lawsuits, all these, you know, the, the employee morale, everything else. And, he, and, and 
you know, the selection of people around him, all kinds of stuff. So I think it's someone who can utilize his best qualities, let's just say, and we'll see who that's going to be. I think you can't well, turn your back on him for sure. Not exactly like replacing Jack Welsh, as ML did before at General Electric, yeah, but yeah. it sounds like you actually do see some parallels and similarities as it relates to his sort of hero status within the company. Well, hero and not hero. I mean, that's the problem. There's controversy about him even within the company. And so, you know, nobody likes this situation and it needs to be changed. And this board is got to get bigger. It's got to get more functional. Um, it's just, it's, it's, it's on some level, it's ridiculous given uh, the opportunity they have and the competition they're facing. So it seems like that's enough, you know, kind of enough. Let's move on to the next uh, challenge that they have. Hey there, thanks for checking out CNBC on YouTube. Be sure to subscribe to stay up to date on all of the day's biggest stories. You can also click on any of the videos around me to watch the latest from CNBC. Thanks for watching.